here's another interesting question I received and something I came across at one time while I was working and building stairs. And um, the individual had kind of the same question I had years ago. They wanted to know if you were going to be using stronger lumber, like a 2x12, 3x12. I was wondering a 4x12 at the time, by the way. Um, could the stair nosing project a little further past than the minimum inch and a quarter required. And I remember this used to be an inch and three eighths. I could have sworn it was, but uh, um, I could be wrong. Inch and a quarter is the maximum according to one of the popular building code books. I will put a reference number to that building code book in the video description box. Now, I don't think, I don't make the building codes. This is just my opinion. I don't think the projection of the nosing has as much to do with the strength of the lumber as the trip hazard it could produce. So when you're walking down the stairway, this might not be a problem, but you're, when you're walking up, you could actually catch your um, foot on the bottom of one of these um, nosings. And that's just my opinion. I don't think it's the strength of the lumber, even though the strength of the lumber would definitely be a concern. So if you had a 2x12, could you go a little further? Um, now keep in mind that you can go further, but this measurement, even though it's two inches longer, um, is not going to provide us with a 13 inch tread depth that the building code. The building code is referring to the measurement um, from the front of the tread above and the front of the tread below um, with a 90 degree angle, something like this. So this step, if it had a two inch overhang, um, and I know a lot of people think that, hey, I'm going to give myself some more room to walk up and down the stairs, but that's not necessarily the case. This is the important number here. Um, the depth of this, I've done it, I've cut stairs a variety of different ways to create an illusion that the steps were wider. Um, and in reality, that was it was just as uncomfortable to walk up and down the set of stairs as if the nosing would have been almost flat or if I would have just had a one inch nosing on it. So to give you an idea, what I did one time was I had a, I had a like a nine inch rise, a nine inch tread. And that was our minimum at the time. And I gave it a one inch overhang, like a one and a quarter inch overhang and a one inch undercut. So it really had a um, uh, really had a steep undercut on. I guess I should say it had a uh, it had the nosing and the undercut. And when you walked up the stairway, it was fine. When you walked down the stairway, it wasn't. Something else I need to point out is that even though you can um, or the building code refers to a closed riser, a solid riser, um, you are going to need to build your stairs. So if you have the overhang, you're going to need to refer to another building code um, that they have. And that is the fact that you cannot pass a four inch round sphere or ball, let's say a four inch round. And in my opinion, doesn't make any difference. It's a cube, which you'll see later on in the video here. You, you're going to need to have a board either at the top or the bottom. Um, some type of a design that is going to prevent the um, sphere from passing through any section of the stairway. And this includes the handrail system also. Now let's take a look at what I'm referring to when I'm referring to a solid riser um, or a closed stairway. And that would be a solid board for the riser. This would require the maximum overhang of one and a quarter inches. Now, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't throw in the original reason why I think they came up with the um, this particular building code. And that would be for this type of stairway design where the treads can be moved forward. They can be cut longer. You're going to have the same effect here. If you have the stair tread positioned here with a 2x12 or a, a 3x12 as you would with a 4x16. 4x16 four would just go further into the um, back here. And then where do you measure the nosing from if you don't have a riser to measure it? So we can measure the um, tread 
distance or depth, but how do we measure the overhang on a stairway like this without even a stringer, a notch stringer to, um, as a reference point? So I think this is the reason why they came up with the uh, orig or with that particular um, building code. If you want to refer to it, it's not an exception. It's just a simple line in the building code that refers to a solid riser. Now you're still going to need to, if you build a stairway like this, you're still going to need to create some type of a barrier to prevent the four inch um, sphere, a four inch space. So you cannot have the maximum distance here. It's got to be less than four inches, three and seven eighths, three and seven eighths of an inch, for example, would work just fine. And to give you a better idea what I'm talking about, I just went ahead and made a four inch cube, a four inch block. This would be the same as a four inch um, sphere. I don't, uh, you know, they could refer to it as a cube or a sphere. Minimum distance or maximum distance, four inches, cannot pass through any part of the stairway, including the um, hand railing or guard railing system. So anyway, hope it helps. Um, and, uh, you know, keep in mind that the stair, you know, if you're going to have a nosing that's going to go a little farther, it, it would be nice to have it supported somehow. Because any, if you're using a 3 by 12 you might be a little better off. But if you're using a 2 by 12 and it's, it's sticking past 2 inches past a stringer or any type of support, even a bracket, and the, um, you get a crack in the end of it here, um, you know, even if it's, even if it's three inches back and it goes all the way through, you're going to have a safety problem. So that would be my main concern with having the nosing project too far out, especially if it was going to be unsupported, structurally unsupported.